Welcome to day two, our session all about transfer pathways to UBC engineering. My name is Erin. I am the student recruitment officer with UBC engineering and my job is to support any student that's interested in coming into our program um, to help you through that process. So whether it's thinking about engineering in the future, whether you're ready to apply now um, or any point through that whole process. So thank you again for joining me this evening. I'm so happy to have you all here with me. Today we're going to be specifically talking about um, UBC Engineering. And so we actually offer our engineering programs on two different campuses. So on the UBC Engineering Vancouver campus, we have 14 undergraduate degree programs that you can choose from. So you can see them all listed on your screen right now. We also offer programs on our Okanagan campus, so you can actually study engineering there as well. There's four different programs there. And the main difference that you'll see between both campuses is that there are different amount of programs on both of the campuses, so four at the Okanagan and 14 at the Vancouver campus. The other main difference that you'll see is a little bit about our first year program. So at the Vancouver campus, you'll do one year of a foundational year where you actually get to learn about all of these other programs if you were coming straight into UBC from high school. Uh, the Okanagan campus is a little bit different where there's actually 1.5 foundational years. So the first term of second year is actually still considered foundation. And then you start to specialize in the second term of second year. So that's a little bit of the differences between the two campuses. So other than one being in Vancouver, one being in Kelowna, the different programs, but that foundational year is a little bit different as well. So today we're here to talk specifically about transfer routes. So if you are a high school student planning to come straight into UBC engineering, this presentation is not for you. But if you are planning to potentially transfer to UBC engineering in the future, then this is a great presentation to listen to. Or if you're currently studying at another post-secondary and planning to join UBC engineering in the future, again, this is a great presentation for you to be checking out. So we're going to talk about the three main transfer entry routes to UBC Engineering. So we have the university transfer route, we have the engineering transfer program, and we have the Camosun bridging program as well. So those are the three kind of main transfer programs that we have that students uh, can enter UBC Engineering as a transfer student. So the first one that we're going to talk about today is the university transfer route. And so what that means is that if you were studying at another post-secondary institution, or if you are studying uh, at UBC but in a different faculty, so if you're in science or arts or something like that, this is the university transfer route. So you'd be transferring in as a university student. When you apply to transfer as a university transfer student, you will go online and fill out the application. We'll talk all about that piece in a second. But when you are evaluated, your application will be evaluated on the GPA of your most recent 30 credits, as well as your math, chemistry, and physics average. And that's not limited to the last 30 credits. So we'll look at back at any post-secondary that you've done um, and look at the math, chem, and physics average in there. Now, the one piece I do want to mention is that the GPA of your last 30 credits will include any failed courses or courses that have been repeated. However, the math, chemistry, and physics average will only look at um, the second course. If you've retaken a course, it'll look at the uh, most recent version of that course. The way that we evaluate you is going to depend on a whole bunch of different things. So the GPA is competitive, and it will be based on who else is applying that year. So the number of seats available does change a little bit year to year depending on the programs, um, how many programs there are, which has been changing in recent years. Um, we've been getting lots more programs over the past few years, so that's promising. It also depends on the number of applicants applying that year, and it also depends on the strength of applicants because as I mentioned, it is competitive, so you will be compared against other applicants. Now, the next route that I want to mention is the engineering transfer program. So there's nine institutions in BC that you can start at. And basically, they have an engineering transfer program 
where it is equivalent to UBC Engineering's first year program. So you can actually take basically the equivalent of our first year program uh, at another institution that maybe is closer to home for you, maybe has smaller classes. Um, there might be a variety of different reasons that this is something that you're looking for. Now, if you start at one of those institutions in their engineering transfer program, um, the admission conditions are a little bit different than the uh, route that I previously mentioned. So, if you complete the full engineering transfer program in one academic year, so from September through April, and you achieve a minimum of 3.1 GPA, then you'll be admitted to our second year program at UBC Engineering. If you do the engineering transfer program, but you don't meet those requirements, so if you don't take all of the courses, you don't meet a 3.1 GPA, um, then you would be considered through the university transfer route, which is the route that I just mentioned previous to this. So this is a great option. If you want to start at one of those nine institutions that I mentioned, those are all on our website as well, but just to remind you of what they are, they're all listed here. You can start there, and as long as you complete the full program, and maintain a 3.1 GPA, you can transfer to either one of our campuses to begin your second year program with us. The third program is a little bit different. So the Camosun Bridging program is for students who have already graduated with a technology diploma. But if you're interested in then working towards a professional engineering de degree, um, if you meet those graduation requirements as part of that program, then you're actually eligible for admission into year three at UBC. The last thing I do want to mention that's related to the engineering transfer program is that if you are an Indigenous student and you're interested in going to Langara, you can do the Aboriginal Transfer Partnership, which actually extends the completion of the engineering transfer program to two years for those Indigenous students. That's another option specifically for our Indigenous students. All right, so those are kind of the three main basic ways of transferring into UBC Engineering. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about that application process and a few other pieces before I wrap up my presentation today. So the absolute deadline for your application, if you are applying to start in uh, September 2021, is January 15th, 2021. The recommended deadline, however, will be to apply for those first round offers by December 1st. That allows you to be considered on your interim transcript results. And it doesn't hurt to apply early because if you are admissible earlier, you'll just get notified sooner. If you aren't admissible based on your interim results, that's okay, we'll still consider you with everyone that applied by the January 15th deadline. So the absolute deadline is January 15th, but I highly recommend applying by December 1st. These dates tend to stand true for future years, so if you're not ready to apply this year and you're considering it for the future, definitely check back online uh, for the confirmed date, but you can expect it to probably be around these same dates again. So how you actually go to apply is you just go to you.ubc.ca, that's our general admissions website for UBC, and you'll click on Apply to UBC. In there, you'll just fill out the full application, answer any instructions uh, and follow the instructions and give any of the answers that it asks for. It'll ask about your academic history. It'll ask about some personal information, things like that. You just fill out the application and then what will happen is you'll get an email later on and UBC admissions will actually tell you what documents you need to send and when you need to send them to us. So the application itself doesn't usually ask for any sort of transcripts right at that point in time, but you'll likely get an email just after you send the application about what you need to send us and when it's required. Now, usually what those pieces are that we'll ask for are official transcripts from your current institution, official transcripts from any other post-secondary institutions that you may have attended in the past, and depending on how many uh, post-secondary credits you've completed so far, we may also ask for your final high school transcripts as well. Again, check your email and UBC will let you know everything that we need from you. Now talking a little bit more about courses and placement and what that all looks like, what you're eligible for, uh, can change a little bit depending on what you've done in post-secondary schooling so far. 
So for students who are applying through the university transfer route, so remember that's the first route that I mentioned where you're either applying from another post-secondary institution or you've started at another faculty at UBC, so something like science or arts, and you're applying to us, we're going to look at what courses you've taken and see how many of those credits apply to UBC Engineering's first year program. Now we're looking for at least 27 of those credits that you've taken to be equivalent to our first year program in order for you to be eligible for second year. If you've taken less than 27 credits, then you may only be eligible for first year. So what do I mean by those courses and those credits? So you can see here on the screen, these are all of the UBC Engineering first year courses that are required and how many credits they're worth. So this is what I mean when I'm talking about you need 27 of these credits. At your institution, these courses that are equivalent may actually show up as more credits on your transcript, but what we're actually looking for is how they apply to our first year UBC Engineering program. There's two links on the screen that you can see, and if you search for UBC transfer credit search tool, that should take you to that first link. That will show you any courses that have already been assessed from your institution to see what they transfer as to UBC. Now, if you're coming from an institution in BC, chances are those courses will be on that site. Um, if you're coming from another institution from throughout Canada or the rest of the world, you can also check that site to see if those courses have already been assessed. If you don't see any transfer credit showing up for your school, it doesn't mean that those courses don't transfer, but it may just mean that those courses haven't been assessed yet, which means you'll have to apply to UBC and then we'll assess your transfer credit after you've applied. Now the other link I have on there is because a lot of credit that transfers to UBC actually shows up as our science course equivalent. So for example, if you see Physics 157 on this screen, that is a physics course specifically offered for UBC engineering students. However, Physics 117, for example, is an equivalent course that many different students at UBC will take. And so your credit might actually transfer as Physics 117, but will be considered equivalent to Physics 157, for example. So that's where you can look at the second link that I've provided where you can see all of those science equivalent courses to our first year of UBC engineering program. All right, so just to summarize that piece again, if you are a university transfer student and you've got more than 27 credits the first year program, you'll be eligible for second year. If you've completed the full engineering transfer program, you'll also be eligible for second year. If you've completed the engineering transfer program but did not complete all of the courses, then again, we will assess you as a university transfer student and we'll look at the credits that you've completed so far. If you are only eligible for year one, then what we'll do is we will usually uh, have students in what we call a modified first year timetable. So you're able to take any courses that you might be deficient in um, or finish off those prerequisites to your upper year courses in that modified first year. Students entering second year, if you don't have all of those 37 credits, Going into second year, you will still be responsible to finish any of those credits that you are deficient in. Some of those may be prerequisites. You may have to finish them sooner rather than later uh, so it doesn't affect your course progression. Otherwise, um, you'll be, need to finish them before you graduate as part of your graduation requirement. Our engineering academic services team will be able to help you through all of those pieces of figuring that out when you're actually ready to come to UBC, so you don't have to worry too much. We're here to help you. But what you do need to know is if you're eligible for year two, so whether you've got those 27 or more credits, or you've completed the engineering transfer program, you will need to complete the placement preference form by May 15th of the year that you apply. So what the placement form looks for is we ask that you rank all of our programs. So we know the order of ranking of programs you want to go into. So a reminder, at the Vancouver campus, we have those 14 different programs that you can choose from. At the Okanagan campus, you can also include those if you're interested in going to the Okanagan campus. And there are four programs offered at that campus. 
You'll also write a personal statement that will be about 500 words that will be read by your first choice program and can help boost your GPA a little bit um, when looking at your overall placement form. You'll need to submit that form by May 15th. Um, and that's when the departments will look at it and basically students are ranked based on their GPA. So the one important thing I wanna know, especially when talking about students who are coming through the engineering transfer program, you need that minimum 3.1 GPA in order to be admitted to here. However, that 3.1 may not make you competitive for all of the programs that UBC Engineering offers. So it's important to make sure that you're not just getting the minimum, but that you're also going to be competitive for the different programs that you're most interested in. So before I wrap up and before I get to a summary of all of the dates that you need to look forward to if you're applying this year, I just wanna talk about a few other things that UBC Engineering has to offer. So I think one of the most exciting things that I hear from students is that UBC Engineering offers project-based team learning throughout your entire degree. So starting right from your start at UBC all the way to the end, culminating in a capstone project, which is a design project in one of your senior years. It's usually working with someone from the industry and you get to design or innovate or create something new. Um, and it's really related to what your degree has been and likely what you'll go on to work in once you graduate. We also have the engineering co-op program. This is a really great opportunity if you're looking to get some paid work experience as part of your degree. It pays quite well and you'll basically get about 20 months of work experience as part of this program. Now, those are usually sectioned off into four month work terms. So you'll go to school or be on a work term essentially starting in second year all the way till you finish. The co-op program will add a year to your degree, um, so it will extend a four-year degree into a five-year program, but again, you're getting paid, you're making good money, and you're getting a lot of really great work experience while you're part of that program. We also have several international opportunities, so Go Global, the coordinate international experience is really unique because it sends you to other engineering institutions throughout the world. We can actually take some kind of engineering focused courses there. We have a lot of engineering clubs, including our Engineering Undergraduate Society or the EUS, which is like our student government. Um, and they host a lot of great events throughout the year. Even this year, they're hosting tons of great virtual events for our students, so it's really great to see. And then we also have over 30 student design teams. These are really exciting because they allow students to get hands-on work experience as part of a team doing a variety of different things. So you'll see we have robotics teams, we have watercraft teams, we have automotive, civil, aerospace teams, biomedical teams, so many different options where you can work with students outside of the classroom. Um, it's all basically an extracurricular activity. Many of them compete. Uh, internationally every year. Even this past summer, there was a lot of competition still happening virtually, and our teams tend to do quite well with it. Um, so we're really proud of our teams, and it's a really great experience to be part of some of these teams as your undergraduate experience. All right, so as I summarize everything that I talked about today, I'm going to go through a timeline of the pieces that you have to look forward to, especially if you're applying this year. Again, these dates tend to be fairly similar, so if you're applying in the future, to take note of, um, but they might be slightly different, so I do encourage you to look up the dates online uh, year that you're applying. Now, the next date to look forward to is December 1st, and as I mentioned, that's the application deadline if you would like to be considered based on your interim transcripts. I highly recommend applying by then. Just get it out of the way and get your application in. Um, but the ultimate deadline to apply, like I mentioned, is also January 15th. So if you don't apply by December 1st, then you still have until January 15th to submit your application. Now the deadline to submit your official interim transcript, if you did apply by December 1st, will be January 31st. Again, you'll get an email with all of those specific details to you. 
Um, and February 15th will be the deadline to submit any documents related to meeting your English language admission standards. So if you haven't been studying in Canada or an English speaking country for more than four years, you may need to take something like TOEFL or IELTS um, to meet that English language admission standard. Again, if you look online, there's several different ways to meet that and you'll find the one that's right for you. May 15th will be the deadline to submit your second year placement form. May 15th is also the deadline to submit your final transcripts. And then most decisions are made in uh, May through June. So that's when you'll uh, find out if you were admitted to UBC. Once uh, in early July is when you'll receive your placement decision. So which program you've been placed into. And in early July is also when registration will happen. So you usually receive your placement decision about a week or two in advance of the registration date. Registration is pretty easy because most of them are standard timetables that you're using. So a lot of the registration work is done for you. You just need to add in a few extra courses. And the last date I wanted to remind you, um, because it does start just before students are back on campus, is in August and September is when you'll be able to apply for co-op. So again, it is for second year students that can apply to co-op. If you are entering for year two, then that's something to kind of look forward to at that point in time. All right, so thank you so much for joining me for our presentation today. I hope that you learned a little bit about some of the different transfer pathways to UBC Engineering, and hopefully that answered some of the questions that you might have. On the screen, you can find some great resources of our websites to find out more information. You can also check out our YouTube channel called Engineering Stories, which is a really great way to see some videos of current students, what life is like as a UBC engineering student, um, and watch some videos to find out a little bit more. So that's a great opportunity to check out. I also have my email on the screen, so if you do have any questions, feel free to contact me directly. I can help answer your questions. So thank you for joining us tonight.